All right, for our third measure of spread and our final one, we're going to do what's called standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is quite a complicated thing to calculate, but we're not going to do all the calculations. We're just going to enter the values into our calculator and we're going to let the calculator do the work for us. This can still be quite tricky because every calculator does it differently. Now, just like range and interquartile range, a smaller standard deviation means the data is close together and a large standard deviation means the data is spread apart. Now we actually have two ty different types of standard deviation we calculate. We've got population standard deviation and sample standard deviation. So just a quick reminder, population means that everyone is involved and a sample means only a portion of the population was involved in the gathering of the data. Okay, and there's also some notation here. Now on my calculator, and I think on most calculators, population standard deviation uses the symbol sigma x and sample standard deviation uses the symbol sx. So we're going to go right into the example, example 4, and we've got the same two classes we've been talking about throughout this whole topic, class A and class B, and the same results. And what we learn is that Class A had 20 results, and in the question it says 20 out of the 20 students completed the quiz. So that means every student completed it. So we're going to calculate the population standard deviation for Class A. But when we look at Class B, only 17 students completed the quiz out of 20. So only a sample of them did it. So when we calculate the standard deviation for class B, we're going to calculate this sample standard deviation. So just a quick reminder for the terminology, we've got sigma x for population standard deviation and for stand, sample standard deviation, I believe was sx. Yes, so i just going to get my pen again. sx, right? Okay, now I've already calculated the standard deviation uh, using my calculator. So I'm just going to show you what they are. So for class A, our population standard deviation came out to be 1.990. And for class B, which wanted me to calculate the sample standard deviation, I got a value of 2.0. 317. Now it's very important that you don't just take my word for it and calculate these values using your calculator. It's different for everyone depending on your calculator, but I should have uh, a couple of links there to one that is for people with the Sharp calculator and one for people who have the Casio calculator. So really important that you go through and calculate those and check that you get the same values that I got. Now question B says what conclusions can we draw from these calculations. Well, as I mentioned earlier, a lower standard deviation means the data is grouped closer together. Class A has a lower standard deviation. So we'll write that. Since class A has a lower standard deviation, it must be grouped closer together. And then we'll write class B would be more spread out. And the reason for that is it's got a higher standard deviation. And when you think about that, that that's actually very true. We mentioned earlier that class A was group closer together and class B was more spread out. So sample standard deviation can be a very useful tool to figure out the spread of data.